All right, so I was hoping that um, you would have watched the video, but uh, I did not make it very clear. So this is the next kind that we're going to discuss, which is uh, using long division. So the question on the WXQ was, when do you know you need to use long division and when do you not? Okay, so when you see something like this. So first, you ask yourself, can I just take the integral? Well, if I split it into two integral, like kind of like number four, I think on the homework, you would do something. Uh, don't write this down. Okay, you would do something like, uh, I'm sorry, I just wrote the same problem again. Okay, you would do something like this, right? Yeah. But you still cannot integrate. Because if you look at the left-hand side, the most complicated part is that x cubed. If you integrate that, you're never going to get that x minus 1 in the denominator. And on the right-hand side, that is not something you can do. So this is where you need to simplify or change to another form of the same equation in order to integrate. So whenever the degree in the top is bigger than the bottom, you're going to think long division. Not just bigger than. When it's equal to, you still have to do long division. Okay. Whenever the denominator is bigger or equal to the numerator, you have to do long division. All right, so let's remind you how to do long division. All right, so we're going to put this in the, uh, not fra fractured form, fraction form. So we're going to divide using long division and then put this in fraction form. All right, so numerator goes in, and what you want to do is put a sp space holder for anything that is not existent. So for example, there is no x squared, so you put a 0 x squared, and then plus x. And then if you want, you can put a plus 0 for the constant. Divide it by the denominator, x minus 1. All right, so what you want to do is take a look at the highest degree versus the highest degree. And then you ask yourself, what do I multiply by x to get x cubed? x squared. And then what you want to do is put that x squared on top of the x squared spot. By this time, this is the third time you've seen long division. So I'm going to just let you do whatever you feel is the best way to do. I, I will still do it my way, which is more systematic. But if you can do something that is going to not fail you, then you can do it that way. Because this is the third time you've already seen, uh, uh, you've seen long division. OK, so this is going to be x cubed minus x squared. All right, long division is a little bit tricky. You do need to subtract, not add. OK, so x cubed minus x cubed is 0. 0 x squared minus minus x squared is what? x squared. x squared. Please be careful. This is where people make mistakes. Um, plus x plus 0. All right, next. Highest degree goes into highest degree. x goes into x squared how many times? x amount of times. x amount of times, so plus x. All right, this is going to be x squared minus x. Subtract down x squared minus x squared is nothing. x minus minus x is 2x, and then plus 0. All right, last part. x and 2x. x goes into 2x how many times? 2. OK, so put a 2 there. 2x minus 2. All right, 2x plus 0 minus 2x minus 2 is hmm, 2. All right, now what you do is you write, rewrite this in fraction form. Okay, so hopefully you remember this. Uh, um, let's uh, make a note. This is called a quotient. Quotient is the answer to a division problem. This part is called a remainder. This part is called a divisor. Okay, so the way you write it is quotient plus remainder over divisor. Okay, so that is 
x squared plus x plus 2 plus 2 over x minus 1. Okay, that is the same polynomial, but, but now it's in a fraction form. And what you want to do now is integrate that. Okay, so this whole integral became integral of x squared plus x plus 2 plus 2 over x minus 1 dx. Okay, this is something you can't integrate because it's just term, 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 fraction. And that fraction is something that uh, the denominator has a higher degree, so that is something you can integrate. Okay, so let's try this one. Integral of the quotient part is all easy, so I'm going to put it all on one side, plus 2 over x minus 1 dx. All right. Easy stuff. x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2 plus 2x. And then what is the integral of 2 over x minus 1? Yeah, natural log. So that's the only way to get that x minus 1 in the denominator, natural log. So 2 natural log x minus 1. And don't forget your plus c. Okay, so long division problems are not hard, or you just have to recognize that's what you do. Sometimes you will have a long division and a arc sine and arc tangent at the same time. So those are a little bit more tricky. All right, let's have you guys practice an easy one. Okay, let me know when you're done. All right, so just to show you kind of a little trick, uh, when you do the long division, uh, this answer becomes 3... Um, plus minus 5 over t plus 1, right? Okay, so since you know that you're, ha you're going to integrate anyways, what I would do is remember that your remainder is always going to be like a constant. So then I would just do 3 minus 5 times 1 over t plus 1. That way, when you integrate, that is already a coefficient in the front, and then you can just integrate like a natural log t plus 1, that will save you kind of a few steps. Yes, you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is just that dt. So the answer is 3t minus 5 natural log t plus 1 plus c. So far so good? Okay, let's try another one. Okay, let me know when you're done with this one. All right, the answer is negative x over 2 plus 2, natural log x minus 1 plus c. All right. Okay, so that's long division, and your homework is going to have some where long division is added with the arc sine, arc tan, uh, which is okay. Um, you can do it. Next part, absolute value. It's, a, it's very easy, but it's just that we have never really talked about it. So then when you see absolute value, you probably are still kind of worried about how to do it. So let's kind of just look at absolute value. Absolute value in normal absolute value graph looks like this, right? The, the reason we cannot integrate this is that both sides have different slope and then in the middle it's undefined or um, uh, the integral is undefined, but then basically two sides are going to go in different slope or basically we cannot integrate that. So what we want to do is look at where they split and then the two sides separately. So on the right, uh, so where do they split on the normal uh, regular uh, absolute value graph? They split at x equals what? Zero. Okay, so on the right of zero, what is the slope or what is the function? Y equals x, very good. On the left of zero, what does the function look like? Y equals negative x. Okay, so basically what happens is at the point where it splits, on the right, it's always going to be the positive function if x is greater than or equal to zero. 
And then on the left, it's always going to be the negative of the function. So it's negative x if x is less than 0. And I'm gonna, not going to overlap 0. So then what happens is if you are trying to integrate an um, absolute value, you have to do it twice, the right-hand side and the left-hand side of wherever it creates a 0. OK? So then this becomes, so the, so the integral of this becomes, uh, make it more clear, uh, integral of this becomes x squared over 2 if x is greater than or equal to 0, and negative x squared over 2 if x is less than 0. Oh, I forgot a plus c. But, so this is what happens when you have an absolute value graph, you have to split it. All right, so now let's apply to actually solving this question. Now, solving this question, I hope you'll kind of recognize that this is basically like asking you, what is the distance from negative 2 to 3 of velocity of if the velocity is equal to x? And then so what you do is you put the absolute value on it, and then you ask yourself, hmm, when does uh, my particle switch direction, which is when the part, uh, absolute value x or x is equal to 0. Does that kind of make sense? OK, so then same thing. We want to figure out where they split. Well, this function splits at x equals 0. So this is going to be from negative 2 to 0. We're going to use the left-hand side function, which says it's a negative x. Plus, from 0 to 3, we're going to use the positive function, which says it's x. So you've never really calculated this way. What I always told you was just put the absolute value bar around it and then just calculate. But essentially, that's what you're doing. You're changing it to the opposite sign. All right, so this is going to be negative x squared over 2 evaluated from negative 2 to 0 plus x squared over 2 from 0 to 3. All right, 0 minus 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 2 squared over 2 plus 3 squared over 2 minus 0. Uh, that is going to be 4 over 2. So 2 plus 8, no, 9 over 2, Okay, which is 13 over 2. Okay, kind of the same if you just have kept all your results positive, it would be the same thing. All right, so let's have you try one on your own. This one. So you want to make sure that you figure out where does this absolute value become zero. All right, it's going to split at one, right? So then it's going to be negative one to one. Uh, and then on the left-hand side, it's going to be a negative function. On the right-hand side, it's going to be a positive function. You guys know what you did wrong? Yeah. Oh, OK. All right, 5 over 2. All right, let's try the last one. The last one is a little bit harder, but it's not that bad. OK, um, cubic. So you have to figure out where it splits. Now, I don't want you to actually solve this problem by hand. This is too long. So I just want you to write out the integral as if you would integrate it. What would you do? OK, so you got to figure out where it creates zeros. Please don't solve it by hand. It's going to take too long. So once you find the zeros, you want to draw a sign chart and then figure out what signs uh, each interval is going to have. Now, what you want to do is not use your calculator and look at the graph. Uh, you want to just think about this function. This is an x cubed function. A normal x cubed goes from bottom to the top. So then you're going to think about how many dips it's going to have. And if it has multiplicity, what's the multiplicity you're going to do to the function, that kind of stuff. OK? And then draw your sign chart that way. Try not to use your graphing calculator and looking at a graph. All right, in this equation, x is equal to 0, 2, 3. So then if you draw the sign chart, 0, 2, and 3 are on the sign chart. And this is a normal x cubed graph. So it's going to go from the bottom up. So it's going to go minus, plus, minus, plus. 
If you have multiplicity, you gotta think about what's gonna happen if you do have multiplicity. But this doesn't, so it just looks like that. So uh, we know that it's gonna be zero to two, and at that interval, it's positive. So x cubed minus five x squared plus six x. And then from two to three, it's gonna be minus. And then x, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't need the absolute value again. I don't need that absolute value. Um, and then x cubed minus five x squared plus six x. And then the last interval is positive it's from three to four of the whole thing. And I forgot dx on all of them. Okay, so that's how you would do the integral if you were to do it by hand. No, I said just leave it like that and then stop.